the uh, the Wilder fight, man. The, I was watching that with a bunch of friends. That had to be one of the like I grew up. Uh, in, I'm 40, okay, so I grew up in the 80s with the Tyson experience and what that all meant, and heavyweights being the dominant figures. And you've heard the story a million times, I'm sure. This was the first time in a long time I thought that America had recaptured that energy a little bit. I'm wondering, looking back on that fight, do you consider that any kind of – what does that fight mean to you in your history? How do, how do you look back on that? I look back on it as a great fight. You know, it was a good fight, a battle of two unbeaten world champions, um, which rarely happens in our days. You know, you, you never get to see two unbeaten giants fighting each other for all for, for for world championships and stuff. So it was a great fight. It was a great fight to be involved in. I believed I won the fight quite clearly. But then again, <clears throat> I'm not going to cry over spilled milk. And, and where the things have happened, it won't be the first time. And it surely will not be the last time that something like that happens. But the good thing about it is we both came out of the fight with more notoriety than we had before we entered. And that's what it's about, you know. We can fight again. We can do the rematch. We can run it back, and we'll see who wins again. So, that's the good thing about a draw. We get to do it again. <laughs> you certainly do. Uh, do you ever have the same concerns that fighters from foreign sea or foreign lands do about competing overseas? Like, do you feel like you'll get a fair shake with the judges either in that fight or your next one? Well, you know, I don't feel like a foreigner in America. I feel like I'm America's own heavyweight champion of the world. Um, I do feel at home here. You know, people speak English here and it's very easy to communicate with people. It's not like going to a European country where they don't, I don't speak Spanish or Italian or French or whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a place where I can I can get on and, and do my thing, you know what I mean? But I'm not too concerned about what the judges are going to do in the rematch. I just hope they do the right thing. And maybe I take it out of the judges' hands anyway and knock him out. And that's the only way you're going to get like 100% fair treatment because take it out of the judge's hands, put it in your own hands, your destiny lies within your own two hands as a boxer. You had, in my judgment for what it's worth, Tyson, you had clearly outboxed him and then that punch came along. And for what it was worth, whether that should have changed the score to so the extent they do is a different debate. But let me ask you about the punch. Is that the hardest you've ever been hit in a fight? It has to be, right? Um, it didn't hurt at all. I didn't feel any pain, so probably not. But did you did it affect your consciousness at all? Like when you hit the canvas, were you aware of your surroundings? Like walk me through how that what that was like. I think when you get hit in certain areas in the head, you lose your coordination. You lose everything. It just goes for a second or so. But when you come round, you either get up and your legs are gone, or you get up and you're okay, like I was in that in that uh, twelve round. But you know, as, as easy as I got up in that twelve round. That I may I may never have got up, you know, that was a type of punch that sometimes people won't wake up from. And especially hit me the right hand and another was going down and hit me a left hook as well. So that should have been concrete, good night Vienna. But the Gypsy King rose like a phoenix from the ashes off the canvas to rally back in the twelfth and put an epic round twelve in. One of the oh, we did we won Ring magazine uh, round of the year. So it must have been a good round.